This audio is rated PG-13. Finally, just sign here. Yep, done. And you, Anthony? Sure. Perfect. Right. Well, you've both signed the final exchange paperwork. Here are both your copies of the property key. As always, a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much, Julia. I'll, I'll send the final payment the moment we're settled. Always appreciated, Michael. Lovely to meet you both and enjoy your new home. Thank you, Julia. We did it. <laughs> we actually did it. Oh, we sure did. Your mum would be proud, babe. Thanks. Just not sure I could say the same for Dad. Well, we don't dwell on him. He's not important. Yeah. Well, shall we? <laughs> sure thing. Oh, you are so dramatic, darling. Hey, it's our first house. Allow me this. I'll give the movers a call in the morning. Get ourselves moved in. Leave it until morning. Oh, yes. We've just bought a house, sweetheart. Let's enjoy the moment. I love you, Michael. I love you too, Ant. Oh. Is this is this the last box? Almost just two more. All right, got it. I swear I am going to pull a muscle if we keep doing this. <sighs> Well, you're the one who wants these boxes kept in the attic. Ha <laughs> ha very funny. Uh, is there more space up there for these last two? Alright, hang on, I'm just going to get my torch. Oh wait, there's no box here. Uh, I'm, hang on, I'm just, I'll, I'll move that. Oh, it's, oh, it's stuck. <laughs> Don't tempt fate and pull a muscle. <laughs> Oh. Are you okay, sweetheart? Yeah, um, uh, I, I just tripped over, I think, but I'm alright. Please be more careful or you'll come through the ceiling below. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, my phone. Ah, uh. mm, the box opened and some papers fell on me. Disgusting, that must be quite old and musty by now. Yeah, thanks for that, and um, I'm the one up here. Nineteen fourteen. And these are letters. From who? Um, it it says O'Neill. Well, that helps narrow it down. Well, it's from the 1910s. I think it's well, letters from a soldier. Tommy. There's a picture. Well, let's get the remaining boxes up there and you can bring that stuff down. Hello, sweetheart. Michael. Uh, yeah, sorry. You best come back to me, Tommy. Mammy, please stop treating me like I'm a child. I'm 30. You know you will always be my baby boy. It was bad enough when your brother joined the Navy. You know I didn't have a choice. You know I'll call up everyone eventually. Because you're not afraid of just a wee bit longer. I have to do my duty. You're lucky your dad isn't around to hear you being a patriot to England. You're worried about being lonely. I know what you're like. Just promise me... No booze. Yes, I know. You've lectured me enough. Speaking of lectures... Mammy. You know what I'm going to say. 
But you really need to be careful. Keep your hands to yourself. You know I'm all right with all of that, but most people aren't as understanding. People have ended up in prison because of homosexuality. Shh. Shh, shh. Annie. Exactly. I've not told a soul. And now you need to, you know, hide it. I know. Don't worry. Oh, you know I'll worry. I always do. It's sort of my job. Love you. I love you too. Now go. Enjoy those good-looking soldiers. At a distance. Bye. There is no way you're going to get away with it. Well, I have so far. Come on, I couldn't miss this. Fighting for king and country. What did you tell Ma? That I got a job. And she believed you? As good as a liar as Pa. <sighs> that isn't something to be proud of. God, I wish I didn't have to go. Evelyn is about ready to pop. My kid will make an appearance any day now, and I have to bugger off to France. You have changed so much since you got married. Sorry, I grew up. Ma will look after her right now. Are you looking to me for reassurance now? Of course she will. That woman had five kids. She's a pro. Right. This is us. Carriage B. On your jump. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. Shut it and just get on the train, London. Good morning, men. Welcome to France. Just a reminder that you are not here for a holiday. Today, as you can see by the hanging hay bags, we'll be covering bayonet charges. No doubt you did this over in good old Blighty. So, it's nothing new, but critical. Right, line up in two ranks. Don't be quiet. Be quiet. No need for chitter chatter. Do you think the Germans will wait for you to chat? to your old mate Harry about the state of dinner? No, move it. Good, any questions? When do we get to go to the trenches, sir? We've been here for a week. Ah, oh, goodness. Just what I like to see. Griffiths, isn't it? Yes, sir, London Griffin, sir. 25117. Yes, 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 calm down, boy. Once we're given orders to do so, I will update you as the days go on. I can't see it being long, though. Is it true about the advance, then, sir? Idle chatter costs lives, soldier. What is your name? Corporal O'Neill, sir. We do not talk about battle plans, O'Neill. Yes, sir. Sorry. Hmm. OK. First person, ready your bayonets. As your comrade runs to the bag, the person behind will fix, and so on and so forth. Run and stab. It's quite simple. Understood, men? Yes, sir. sir. Oh, I thought we had men in our army. Ready, men? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Good. On my whistle. <laughs> oh. You're meant to attack it, man, not tickle it. Of course, sir. Call yourself a soldier? I'll put more effort into a real person, sir. Yes, well, then show me, hmm? Yes, sir. Oh, good lad. Name? Corporal Griffiths, sir. Oh, another Griffiths? Yes, sir. London's my brother, sir. Ah, oh, yes. Tell me, how old is your brother? Sixteen, sir. Right. Move along then, for the next man runs you. That's it, that's it, O'Neill. That's it, that's it. Well done. Uh, sir. Afternoon, Lieutenant Tanner. These your new men? Yes, sir. My first men, sir. Good, good. Don't allow them to settle in too much. Be back in that mud soon. Looking forward to heading back out, sir? That is the correct answer, Tanner. Let's keep up that morale. These lads are eager enough. 
Quite behind the ears, they will think different after their first march over, but always think of the honor we will receive when we return, the women that will love us. How was your wife then, sir? Doing as wives do. You're attacking the Hun, not stroking a cat. Corporal Griffith, sir. I've already told him of a being soft. And your wife? How was yours? Well, I presume she's... well, we barely right. But it's okay. It's a marriage of convenience. Ah, I get your meaning. I'm pretty sure you don't. No offense, sir. None taken. What about the lad there? The one with the dark hair? And blue eyes? Um, possibly. O'Neill. He seems to know what he's doing. Yes, he definitely knows his way around a rifle. That's the third time he's had to refix London's bayonet. London? What sort of a name is London? I'm sure his parents were trying to be inventive. Yes, quite. Anyway, I didn't come here to chat. Here, a letter from HQ. Oh, dear. That is never good. If I have to stab another hay bag, I'm going to go crazy. Well, by the looks of a lieutenant's face when he was handed that note, I reckon we'll be heading out soon. We knew we would be going to the trenches eventually. I think it's going to be more than digging trenches and laying communications, London. Oh, so action then. You are so turning into our past. It's genuinely crazy. Afternoon. Afternoon. Don't worry, we're just as confused as you. I was just told to come here, to the old house. I'm John, by the way. But the lads call me Sherlock. Sherlock? Private John Watson. Ah, uh, I guess it. Ben. I'm London. That's Sid. And there's Tommy. Nice to meet you. We best all get along. Reckon this is our platoon. We'll end up being together a lot. <clears throat> At ease, men. I'm not one for all this saluting, so, uh, as you have probably guessed, we will be moving out tonight. Now, I advise you to try and get some rest now. We'll be leaving at 2300 hours. You will bring all of your equipment. You bigger lads will bring barbed wires and tools. O'Neill, I'll leave you to manage the sorting of that. Yes, sir. We'll be travelling at speed. In the darkness. We have been given our route over, so we shall be okay. A total of 100 men and boys will be with us. But us small band of men are the leads. What does that mean, sir? Cannon fodder. It means we lead, they follow. Ensure all your gear is cleaned, including your guns. They may save your life. So, eat, then bed, sir? Yes, very much so. Have them ready at 22.30. Will do, sir. Dear Mammy, I'm meant to be resting, but I can't turn off my brain. I'd love to tell you exactly why I'm struggling to sleep, but I know the war, fellas, will be bracking it out. So I'll just avoid the subject and ask you about home. I know I've not been gone for long, but already it feels like forever. What have I missed? How is my brother and his children? Have the new babies arrived yet? Bet you're well excited for that. I know how much you love kids. I hope you're keeping yourself busy. The one thing that concerns me about being here is leaving you alone. I'm in good company. We are a mixed bunch and a man in charge, James Tanner. He's very good. And his uniform cuts him fine, if you know what I mean. I'm staying out of trouble, leaving that to this young chap named London. Now he's going to be our pure chaotic element when we travel out. Hopefully it should provide us some entertainment. All the best. Your baby boy, Tommy, Tommy O'Neill. You know, 
I was half asleep and I thought to myself, I'll give my husband a kiss good morning. But once again, for the second morning in a row, you weren't there. Sorry. You're awake early. Yeah, I've just been doing some reading and um, I uh, found this in the attic. Paintings? Who are these two? Uh, Tommy and James. Mm, who are they? You know, from the stuff in the attic. These are the letters, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, soldier, Tommy O'Neill. What's got you so invested? Huh? Well, you're getting a bit obsessed. Well, this stuff is really interesting. In interesting how? Well, you know, he's a soldier from World War One. Okay, we, I mean, we could just Google it. Yeah, but this is real, Anne. It, it's truly real. A again, you could just Google it. But we have the original letters. <sighs> Mike... I need your help around the house. We're moving in, and you're sat here reading letters that were in a rotting box in our attic. Someone put them here for a reason. Or left them there. Have you even googled this guy? Do you know the ending? Well, no, I want to read it. I doubt it ends well. Tommy's gay, and... Okay. Well... These letters, it's in 1915 now, and and he's gay. I, I get what you're trying to say here. Times have changed now. And you don't understand this at all. Pride was well, only a few months ago, and even we saw protesters when we were marching. Yeah? There are bigots everywhere these days. And so imagine what it was like in 1915 for Tommy. He's in the army on the front line as a gay man. I'm just invested in the story. All right, all right, my love. Do you want some coffee? I'm all right. No worries. Did, do you want to go out tonight? Tonight? Yeah, just to, you know, get out of the house, away from the boxes, and ce celebrate our moving in. What, like a date? <laughs> we are married, after all. I can't ask my husband out on a date. Well, yes, of course. I'd love to. Great. I'll book us a table for tonight. Your favourite place. Oh, I don't deserve you. Oh, I know you don't, darling. Um, I think I'll have the crispy duck with grilled vegetables. And, and um, can we get some of that um, uh, dippy bread stuff? Toasted bread with the vinegar oil? Yes, that's the one. <laughs> Very good choices, sir. And you, sir? Mike? Michael! Oh, so, sorry. Your order, sir? Oh, um, I'll, uh... I'll have, uh... I'll have... Sorry about this. Oh, none at all. Um... Yes, I'll have the char-grilled chicken with the polenta chips and the mixed salad, please. A fantastic choice, sir. Your menus? Oh, here you go. Thank you. What's wrong with you tonight, sweetheart? Uh, nothing. Sorry. Sweetheart, come on, tell me. Work was just a bit stressful, you know? Anything you want to talk about? Oh, it's, it's nothing that can be helped. It's just that weird old guy, Phil. You know, the one who's always asking me questions about my life. What did he ask now? Just, mainly just about the house and how we could afford it. Nosy bitch. Well, he's an old man. I, I know what he really means. It's all that old-fashioned mindset. Oh, so it's about us. How did we get the house? Yeah. Grumpy, pathetic. Look, it's not worth dwelling on, and he doesn't understand how the how the world's changed. Should we talk about something else then? Yes, please. Right. I saw a nice area in the park on my lunch break today. Thought it'd be a good place for a picnic, maybe. Oh yeah, that that sounds lovely. Hmm. I've got to pop down to the shops the night before, get us some nice snacky bits. Oh, you're spoiling me, honey. It's what I do best, my love. 
Um, I was also thinking, after you've read mm -hmm. them, of, of course, um, would you want to donate those letters to a museum? What? Well, it's, it's just a thought. I'm, I'm not saying you have to do it. What, what museum? Um, the Imperial War Museum in London. We could give them to them. Well, for them to get lost with the rest of the letters. What do you mean, lost? Well, these aren't just any letters, and it's important to me, t to us. Us? <sighs> Never mind. I shouldn't have said anything. No, 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 no. Don't shut me out, please. No, it's fine, and I just... I don't want to ruin tonight. <sighs> Tell me about Brenda at work today. You said there was a problem with the photocopier. <sighs> Go on. All right. Well, you know, she's always had those issues with printing. You know, this printer's also a photocopier, and then she put the paper into scan, and it went all... And then she calls me over and starts going off on me about how, you know, oh, I'm the techie one, you're the one that can fix this. Button. Oh. oh, bloody ridiculous. Move in the men in this light, sir. I don't make the orders, James. Anyway, chin up. Can't have the lads seen you gloomy. But the lads can't see me. Gloomy or otherwise. You'd think we'd be singing. And give our position away. Every day at camp they were going on about a morale. <sighs> Not sure that's high on the list of priorities here, Sherlock. Sorry, mate. It bloody stinks. I can only imagine what we are walking past. Probably why they decided to march us at night, so we aren't put off by the sights. Do you reckon we are far from the hung? No bleeding clue. Hush, men. Stop speculating and concentrate on your footing. There's boards up ahead, and they're meant to help. Obviously, they are slippery as hell. Notice, sir. Thank you. You're a right arse wiper, aren't you? What's that meant to mean? Yes, sir. No, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm just following orders and respecting the captain. If you say so. Hush it, will you? How long have we been going at this? Difficult to say. You have a watch? What I don't have is the ability to see in the dark, do I, London, you twat? Don't you be getting grumpy at me. It's only because you're scared and nervous. You always take that sort of thing out on me. <sighs> you shouldn't be here. As you keep saying, but I am now. And I'm going to prove to everyone that I can kill just as Hush, many... Griffiths. Both of you. Not much further, men. That's the third time he said that. This is a maze. Don't worry, young Griffiths. I know where we're going. Never doubted you, sir. Your turn to suck it up, eh? Promotion. <laughs> this is your first trip. Doesn't hurt to try. Where exactly are we being dragged to, sir? Our base for the next few weeks. When he says home, don't be expecting coziness, boys. Just mud on mud. And the occasional rat. Didn't join for home comforts. You were the one moaning about the food before we even set out. Yes, but Sherlock, you never had a meal made by Mabel Griffins. That woman bakes with stars. Armour. He's on about Armour. Well, we make it back. Maybe I can have the honour. Watch it. Sherlock has a thing for older women. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. You're quiet, O'Neill. Just looking around, sir. Please, call me James, if you want. When no one important is around, that is. Oh, oh, thank you. And uh, make everyone comfortable. Try not to look closely at what's around you, Tom. It will play havoc on your brain. You're right about these boards. They do nothing to stop us slipping. 
Yami trying its best. Next left and we're at our point. Can you say what the plans are for our team, sir? They haven't told me much. Not yet. It seems to be a case of letting us know at the very last minute. What's your role in this rabble? Keeping them somewhat under control? Well, you're doing a very good job. Do you have any hobbies, Tom? Not really. Well, you will need some out here. Otherwise, it won't be a bullet that takes you, but a border. Do you have any, James? Well, I paint a little. I like to work with people mainly. Maybe once we are settled I can paint you? I'd like that. You could send it back home to me, Mammy. <gasps> Mammy? Oh, it's an Irish thing. Ah, I see. You're from Ireland, are you? Never been. My mother came from that way, though. And your father? Oh, long story there. Well, we will be here for a while. Maybe you can tell me his story while I paint. Sir, please say we're nearly there. My feet feel like they're going to fall off. Yes, Private Ball, just over there. Here we go. Home sweet home. Put the equipment into the duct out shelves. I'll be in here. What's that, like some underground office? Basically. Griffiths? Sir? We need a router of two men on for the lookout. They will be stationed just over here, with guns. Can you sort that out for me? Of course, sir. Brilliant. Sit down and relax as best you can. Sherlock, boil some water. Let's make some tea and warm our souls as much as possible. I can do that, sir. Well, bet this is less thrilling than you thought it would be. Hit the nail on the head there, O'Neill. I hope the action picks up. I feel like you're going to regret saying that. For some reason, I thought we would be able to see them, you know? Like the tops of their German hats bobbing around in the distance. Wait. What? I saw a light. Like a reflection. Where? Over there. What are you doing? Readying my gun, just in case. Do you really think? <laughs> ah! <sighs> down, London. Get down! I'm German. We could have had the first shot then. Are you okay? Yep. Didn't touch me. We have the advantage here of not being incredibly tall. I got the short gene. Dame, take care of me, mammy. What in God's name are you two doing? Get up onto your perch and shoot back, or I'll shoot you for cowardice. Where is your command? Dug out, sir. Right. Well, go on then. Show them what for. Pretty sure we'll get in trouble for this. For painting? Oh, Tommy, come on. Not so much for painting. More of a fact I'm stood here with no top on. <laughs> it's a nice day. The war is quiet. Plus, I don't know if you remember, but I am in charge of this unit. So we can do as I please. I'm pretty sure that's not how this works. Right, how do you want me to pose? Um, hmm, sit there. Yes, perfect. That light is very nice on your skin. My pale Irish skin. Do I look like I'm complaining about your pale Irish skin? I find it quite nice. 
on the eyes, if I could be honest. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if you hold your gun just here, between your legs, then you lean into it. Who exactly is this painted for? The last you did, I'm definitely sending to me mammy. This one. She'd probably give me a club around the head with a wooden spoon. I'm taking an artistic approach. That's all. Now, hold still. Don't you be taking forever with this. Sat in the sun like this, I'll burn. <laughs> I'll be as quick as I can. Uh, wait a moment. I have an idea. <sighs> What are you doing? Well, the tribes in Africa cover themselves in mud to not get burnt. You're not putting mud on me. <laughs> Stay still. Mm. That is not a pleasant feeling. It, is it cold? It's quite soothing, actually. Hmm. Are you going to carry on painting, or...? I'm just looking at my subject. Up close. You know, to... get all of the detail. Well, of course. James? Yes, Tom? James, it's time, lad. Get your men ready. Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, I'll ready the men. Good. Show them what for. Oh, indeed. Easy enough for you to say. You're not the one sending the boys over the top. But for that, Tom... Is it that time already? Very soon, yes. I really don't want to go over the top. None of us do, darling. That's why I've woken you before everyone else, just in case. Well, we'll be alright. I've prayed hard enough. I mean, Mammy, I bet she's praying even harder. I'd like to meet this famous Mammy of yours. That can be arranged when we get out of this hellhole. <laughs> I brought you something. A treat before I get the lads ready. Oh? Here. It's chocolate. Where did you get this? Oh, I worked my magic. Well, I hope you don't mean the same magic you worked on me in the corner of the trench that evening. <laughs> no. That magic is... Only for you. <laughs> it's very good, magic. <laughs> I'll treat you after we fill in those Germans. But first, chocolate. Here, allow me. Thank you. You know, if anyone knew what was going on between us, we would be locked up. And that is why... We do it in secret. If you want to keep it a secret, you two need to keep it down. And give me some chocolate as a bribe. Uh, what? What? How long have you been there? Long enough. Chocolate? Thank you. And don't worry. Love is love in my eyes. I'll take the secret to the grave if I have to. <laughs> Thank you, London. You're a good lad. So, we doing this? Yes. <clears throat> Begin waking up everyone else in the team. 
Tom, have them all lined up and ready to attack by 700 hours. Yes, sir. You know, I think we picked a good day for this picnic. Mm, totally. Do we have any more sandwiches left? Uh, one of them is salmon and cheese. Other is coronation chicken. Have you got a preference? More, more of a coronation chicken man myself. Fair. Another hour here and then home for dinner, he says with a mouthful of sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good, babe. It's pretty hot. Yeah? What's that sound? I'm just reading. Michael, you said it would be just... Would be just us two. It is. Don't be like that. You know what I mean. You're obsessed with those letters. Uh, and... Please, I'm just reading. Thought we'd spend time together. People read at picnics, you know. Fine. What's your problem with this, Ant? With what? With me reading these letters. Don't you get how important this is? You keep saying that. And I mean it too. This deserves to be remembered. A gay man in the war. I'm sure there were plenty of them. Oh, you can't be ignorant what was going on in the world during that time. Have you failed to notice that it's Remembrance Day in a few days? And it's any different to now? Completely. In case you haven't noticed, we've got a mortgage and a life together. Something that Tommy would never have known. I'm almost finished with this story anyway. Yeah, and then what will you get obsessed with afterwards? What is it with you? Why does this matter? We don't spend any time together, Michael. You only care about these bloody letters. The weather's taking a turn. We best be getting home. What's the matter, London? Excitement gone? Hush you. That'll be a yes then. Ben, leave him alone, mate. This isn't the time. Wish I'd gone off a little earlier. Gasping for a cigarette. Don't light one now. You'll give away our position. I'm not an idiot. Oh, I'm going to have the biggest glass of whiskey when we get back home. If we get back home. Don't. I go. I don't know how my ma would cope. Same, Tommy. One thing Pa said to me and Sid was that if Ma lost both of us, she would never forgive us. And yet you still sneaked off. Not now, Sydney. I've made my bed. Guess it's time to lay in it. You're all worried about mothers. Bunch of boys, the lot of you. I'm married. Been that way for a while. Never spoke of home. It was too painful. But now, we are here, looking out over no man's land, and all I can think about is Evelyn. She would be heavily pregnant by now. <laughs> Bet that's a right picture. Her waddling around with her guts sticking out. I'm sure Ma is looking after her. No doubt about that. I just hope I get to meet the baby. My little boy or girl. I have kids. Three. They live with their nan. My wife died before the war. No pictures, though. Could never afford it. We've all been holding these thoughts close to our hearts, I guess. What about you, Tommy? Got a girl at home who isn't your mammy? Oh, no. No girl at home for me. What you writing? Oh, this? Just my notebook. Been using it as a sort of journal. For when I'm home and I'm trying to remember things to tell the family. Why didn't I think of doing that? Right. Yes, me being here means it's almost time. How, how long? A matter of moments. Ready rifles, men. Trust me to end up being the first by the ladder. I'll swap if you want. Not a coward. Yes, you are. Now swap before anyone notices. All locked and loaded, sir. Good. Good. 
No, Sydney, no! Keep moving, London, you idiot! Go, go! Press, press on the bullet. On, on, press it, please. Oh, shit, shit, shit. They're going down like flies. This is suicide. We just need to get to the next lot of trenches. Keep going. Take cover. Tom. London. That. Oh God, God. My legs, my legs, my fucking legs are gone. Tommy, Tommy. I'm over here. I'm coming to you. I think I'm done for four days. Oh, no, 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 you will be. You'll be fine. They will have one of those lovely, lovely nurses that fix those, fix those legs. Come on, right up. James. My, my chest. My chest. Well, no matter for bandages, I'm at bandages will we'll fix that. James, 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 no. You can see all my insides, my dear John. Let's face it. We're going, not going to get a happy no, ending. No, 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 no. Look at me. You look at me. Do you honestly think I'll make it out of here? I've a... I have no legs left. I think I'm bleeding out. At least... Oh. It, it, it's the same. Great. Come here. Come here. Come here. James. Stretches, stretches, men injured. Oh my god, my face. Ah! At least we're out of the mud. Hey, Tommy? I'm not out of danger yet. London? London, is that... is that you? Under all the face bandages, yes. Got it blown clean off. I wanted to show off my battle scars. Having no face left wasn't really what I had in mind. At least you can walk. Losing my legs. <sighs> kind of poetic, really. My dad lost his legs. Maybe we'd find a funny side in this. Got to laugh or we all cry. And the others? No, Tommy. It's only us left. Even James. I'm sorry. I lost Sid. I literally saw it happen in front of me. A bullet went straight into his skull. I keep seeing it playing out and out over and over in my head. I have to tell the family, his wife, her baby. I'm not going to see you tomorrow. What makes you say that? You're here now. You're safe. I feel so, so weak. London. 
Can I ask a favour of you? Of course. There. On the table. There is my notebook. And everything I had in my pockets when we went over the top. Yes? Give them to me, Mum. Please. She would love to read them. A journal. A note between me and James. You can give them to her yourself. You will be all right, Tommy. You will go see your mammy again. You will go home. One moment. Come in. Good afternoon, Mrs. O'Neill. I, that's me, I guess, and you're one of those who made it back from Tommy's regiment. Sweet Lord, you're young. Yes, most of me made it back anyway. Sorry about my facial appearance. Oh, oh that can't be helped, Pet. I'm London. Wish we had met under better circumstances, if I'm honest, London. I'm here because Tommy asked me to deliver something, miss. My Tommy? Uh, how about I make us some tea? Come on, but make sure to wipe your feet. <laughs> yeah. You have a nice home, Mrs. O'Neill. Thank you, Beth. So, Tommy, I... Tommy, he was a, a good soldier, a good man. Time and time again, I told him not to go. How old are you, boy? Truffle? Truffle? Fourteen. Oh, you silly idiot. He spoke fondly of you. He asked me to give you these. So, what do we have here then? His diary. Oh, you sweet boy. He asked me to deliver it here. Said you would appreciate it. Oh, I do. I really do. Me. He had a, a friend, miss. A very close friend. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I get your meaning. You said you didn't mind. God loves all London. He never got any judgment from me. What was he like, this, uh, this close friend of his? His name was James Tanner. He was one of our officers. <laughs> At least my boy had taste. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll pour that tea and we can talk through this diary together. If you're comfortable, that is. Of course, Mrs O'Neill. As long as I don't make you feel uncomfortable. Does it hurt? Your face? Not as much as it did. Just take some getting used to, only having one eye. People stare and laugh. People can be so cruel. But no, London, I'm fine. Honestly. Thank you. Right, you get yourself comfortable by the fire. And I'll bring the tea in and maybe some biscuits. Tommy always loved my biscuits. I'd sent some, but he never received them. Jerry got to him before. I'm sorry. He meant everything to me. He was my light. I thought he was gone. How 
how can I move on from him no longer being here? He doesn't even get a proper funeral. Here, I found this tucked inside the book. A picture James painted of Tommy. <sighs> so handsome. My boy. <laughs> My precious baby boy. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. I offered to stay behind for an extra half hour to get this work done. <sighs> Sweetheart? Hey, 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 what's wrong? I just... I, I just finished the letters. And? He... He... He died, and... I'm so sorry, Mike. Yeah. It, it was... Just very emotional. What do you want to do now? <laughs> what? With the letters, I mean. <sighs> I'm, I'm not sure yet. I mean, have you thought any more about the museum idea? Yeah. Um. Yeah, just give me a little bit of time to think. I just, I just want to hold you. Oh, sweetheart, come here. Mm. <sighs> oh, I can't sleep. juice. Eh, letters. <sighs> well, I'm not going to get back to sleep, am I? I might as well take the opportunity to learn about this myself. Oh, morning, my love. Well, it's a bit early for you. I couldn't really sleep. Um... I'm sorry for worrying no, you. No, no, no. I, just, I wanted to let you sleep. I made breakfast. Thanks. <sighs> Thanks, babe. Always here for you. Hey, I was um, thinking, it's Remembrance Day today. I thought we could go down to the church before the minute silence. Yeah. Yeah, you've been reading those letters. And if I'm honest, I didn't get much sleep last night because I decided to sit down and have a read as well. What did you think? It, it reminded me of my mum. When I came out to her, she was always so supportive of me. And, and like you say, I can only imagine what it was like for Tommy and his mother during those times. Keeping that secret for so long they were so close yeah I thought the same I'm sorry Mike for dismissing the whole thing you're all good babe I get it Tommy's story is I suppose it's like yours in a lot of ways mm. I really hope the family are alright in the end me too Oh, come on. Eat up, and we'll get ready and go to the church. I never realised how many people came to church for the minute silence. Yeah. It's always at work when I do it. 
Glad we got the time off so last minute. Yeah, exactly. We're we're lucky to be where we are now. Yeah. Silence, it's over. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. You're, you're all right. <laughs> you get lost in your thoughts again. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, Come on, we better get going. Well, I guess I'll figure out what to do with those boxes now, then. Yeah, about that. Um, I kind of already did something. Did something. What? What are no, you no, no, go, done? Go, 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 go. Calm down, Mike. I called the History Museum in London. I'll tell you about it on the way home. says the exhibit is just up here. <laughs> we are in the World War I history section, after all. <laughs> you know what I mean. Come on. <laughs> oh, my God. It, oh my, it, it's amazing. LGBTQ representation during the World Wars. It, it's, it's not just Tommy. It's hundreds of accounts. Hundreds of men and women alike. I guess it explains why it took so long to put this all together. I could... I could never find it within myself to discover what really happened to Tommy. It seems the museum found out for us. I did? Look, here's Tommy's letters in the glass cabinet. <laughs> Still in good condition. I'm so glad. The text below. Both killed in action. Didn't make it out in one piece. <sighs> Died in the hospital. Excluded from official records. What? Well, look here, it, it, it says they were not at the memorial service records. It, it's almost like... It's almost like those in charge were ashamed and... And they thought Tommy and James deserved to be forgotten. Oh, Mike... This is what I meant, and like, we are so lucky to be where we are. We may still have the fills from work that bother us from time to time, but where we are now in life, it, it changes everything. We always mattered. People like us were never different in the way it was made out to be. We are not the enemy. I agree. And these men they they fought they protected our country and they were not even included in the records because they loved one another it's sickening yeah <laughs> the paintings of them made it in there the paintings yeah see 
Molly always knew. She kept them. She must have been devastated. Did you see these? A, a memorial poppy? Yeah, with rainbows. Our rainbows. Oh, and they're amazing. I'll be giving them out every year. To remember those who fought on the battlefield and to those who had their own battles to fight at the same time. They're incredible. They don't need to hide their pride anymore. Tommy and James are free. 